Welcome to the Extreme Chess Championship. Today, we have eight of the best young chess players in America competing to be the first Extreme Chess Champion. Crushing everyone's soul is in the realm of possibility. Whenever you lose, you're not happy. I think I'm gonna win. It's kinda like Survivor, right? I played in parks from Manhattan to Brooklyn. A lot of girls are better than guys. I have the best chess tactic. I'm gonna play aggressively and hope for the best. to the Extreme Chess Championship here in New York City. I'm Jonathan Corbla, and this is Jennifer Shahadi. We have an exciting matchup for you today, Elena versus Alex. That will be great, and then we've got Elliot and Alyssa waiting in the wings. Now to remind you, last time we saw Casa and Justice advance to the semifinals, and we're gonna see who joins them today. Let's take a look at our players. Elena is 15 years old, the youngest female chess master in the country. And we've got Alex, who's a student at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, which has a very strong chess team. They've won numerous national college chess championships. He's also a bit of a poker player. So it'll be interesting to see if his knowledge of psychology can help him in the chess games as well. We have our host, Casey Marie, who's gonna tell us about how the clocks work in the Extreme Chess Championship. In the Extreme Chess Championship, players often start the game with slightly different times on their clock. There's a reason for this. White always moves first in chess, and that's a big advantage for good players. To make things fair in the Extreme Chess Championship, players bid on how much time they're willing to sacrifice in order to play with the white pieces. The player that bids the lowest time naturally chooses white. For example, if you choose 12 minutes and it's the winning bid, you go first with 12 minutes on the clock and your opponent starts with 15. Every time a player makes a move in the Extreme Chess Championship, they get an additional five seconds on the clock. This is called an increment. And don't forget, if a player's clock ticks down to zero, it's game over. Never really played Alex before, so I'm interested to see what happens. I'm pretty sure it was not an accident ratio <laughs> of girls to guys playing because to all the people who are going to be watching it, they want to show that there's more girls, I think. But in reality, nah. Overall, men think that they're better than women, which I completely disagree with. I, I had this thing that if there's like a pretty girl or whatever, like their rating is like 100 points higher than <laughs> yeah, I like agree with that. their strength. Do you have any special tactics that you might use against him? Do you know how he plays? I study chess every day. I have my dad's chess club. He coaches me. Most importantly, we look over tactics, which is like very important in chess. I have a um, friend that plays chess, this girl, and she says like she has like a losing position, so like start playing with her hair and stuff. <laughs> I have beaten like high rated players before, but I guess I'll just have to see what happens. I try not to let the fact that I'm playing a girl like affect it, things, really. I hope that he underestimates me. With the white pieces, we have Alina Katz. With the black pieces, we have Alex Barnett. Start your clocks. I completely disagree with Alex's theory about women being overrated. If anything, I think men tend to play really well against women because they're trying to impress them. And they're off in the beginning of the game. It's funny the dress because Alex looks like he's ready for the poker club while Elena looks like she's ready for the club club. And let's see how this game got started. Another Sicilian. It's extremely popular, played by players like Bobby Fischer and Gary Kasparov. The Sicilian is a very popular opening which begins when White pushes his king pawn forward two squares to e4. And the opponent responds by moving their queen's bishop pawn forward two squares to c5. When you play the Sicilian, you're saying, I don't care if I'm black or white, I'm gonna try to crush you. He's older, he's more experienced. He's a favorite in this game. Oh, what up, chess world? We got Alex Barnett, the usual. This is the Barnes world. Three of my friends are here. <laughs> Gina? Hello. Yeah. Oh, you suck at this. Bye. <laughs> Bar Barnes out on this one? Barnes out. Mm -hmm. Hey. I enjoy going to the gym. I 
like studying social studies in school. I like hanging out with my friends and just traveling. It looks like Elena's been very thoughtful so far. She's taking her time with her moves. She knows she's the underdog to Alex, but she's gonna bring her A-game today. Both Alex and Elena have said that they excel in quick, fast chess games. So they're both playing at their strength in this game. It seems as though both players are now developing their pieces, looking for opportunities to attack. What interests me about this game is that Elena's playing really solid. She's castling. She's developing her pieces. Whereas Alex, he's leaving his king out there in the center. And Alex is going to try to take advantage now as he set up a battery, where he lines up his queen and his bishop in order to aim for a checkmate. That is a checkmate idea that we are going to see again and again in the Extreme Chess Championship. Using that queen, the most powerful piece, and having it protected by another piece to try to checkmate the king. It's such a common way to mate your opponent. Of course, Elena could take that knight off, but she would be up a knight, but then she would get checkmated. She should hold her horses and stop that checkmate right away. She does do that. She didn't get her chess master rating by missing mates in one. No Absolutely way. Not. So she moves her F pawn to guard against the checkmate. Alex still not castling. Elena developing her rook to stare down at that queen. She's hoping that she can move her bishop away and that when it moves, the rook will be attacking the queen. Alex sees it and he removes his queen from danger. To remind you, castling is the only time in chess where you can move two pieces at once. You develop all the pieces between your king and your rook, then your king moves two squares over and your rook hops over. It makes the king a lot safer and harder to checkmate. Castling is really important. In master level chess, not castling and leaving your king in the middle is like biking without a helmet. The funny thing is, if he had a little bit of respect for his opponent, he would have gotten his king out of the middle of the board. Punish him, Elena, punish him. He's trying to say, come and get me, Elena. Come and get me. Come okay. on, put the pressure on him. Let's see you go after that king. He's leaving it in the middle. It sounds like you're rooting for someone over there. Well, I don't know. I, I, I always go for the underdog. Now she's trying to double her rooks. That's a, that's a smart idea. She wants to get all her pieces into the game in this position. A good chess coach would say rooks smile on open files. The tough thing about her position is it's not so easy to attack black he doesn't have any clear weaknesses. Well, that's never stopped me, so hopefully it doesn't stop her. And here she goes. She's trading off her bishop for a knight. I'm not so sure about that. I've always loved my bishops, but... I've right. always loved my knights. Fair enough. <laughs> Elena pushes her knight up, hops her knight into that square attacking the rook, and Alex, of course, moves it away instantly. Looks like she's just sitting there waiting for him to castle, hoping that he tries to get his king to safety, but Alex has decided his king is much safer where he is. And then boom, as soon as I say that, he, he castles. castles. It's tough because as much as I think Elena has tried really hard to create something here, she hasn't. And I like Alex's game here. I do like his two bishops. I don't think he's much better, but I think he's better. And the combination of that and his experience it's gonna make this game a little tough for the underdog. Elena's gonna to have to find something really powerful here if she's gonna be able to mount an attack. Ooh, but look at this move. She moves her queen right into enemy territory. So when she plays her queen there, she's hoping to move her rook to the same file and threaten a checkmate. Maybe Alex might be more likely to make a blunder with so many pieces bearing down on his king. Exactly, and now here he goes again with that little pesky checkmate threat. And of course, she notices that battery popping back up and prevents it with the rock. Quick and confident is the name of his game. I like how he's wearing that hoodie so that Elena can't catch any towels off of him. <laughs> he's an intimidator. Oh, and now he's got control over the only open file on the board. Notice that e-file is the only open file to occupy and he's got it. Yeah, she's looking for an attack, but she's just grasping at straws here. It seems like Alex has complete control over the game. Elena, realizing that Black's attack was probably stronger than her own, decides to go for a queen trade. I don't think it's going to make the situation much better. In fact, after this, the rook gets into the promised land. That's where every rook wants to go. It wants to get into that seventh rank. Definitely. In this case, second rank. That's bad news for Elena. And now we've got the rook on the second rank. Why is that so good? Because the pawns all start out on that second rank. So when you get your rook there, you're hitting all the pawns at once. Like a pig on the second rank. I don't think that Elena is going to be able to protect all those pawns. In fact, one of them just goes down. 
Oh, down! Once one pond goes down, the problem is, especially with those beautiful pawns that Alex has right in the center of the board, they're gonna come forward to make a queen. When your pawn reaches the end of the board, it can become anything you want it to be, usually a queen. She's in a lot of trouble now. Hopefully she can mount something. She manages to blockade the pawn with her knight, which is good. It slows things down a little bit. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's gonna help matters a lot because Alice is now taking the other pawn and you're right, this darn rook and bishop are just like pigs. They're eating all the cupcakes in the store. The bishop just jumps into the center of the board. Unfortunately, not only is it attacking the rook, but also it's putting pressure on the king behind it. That's a pin, and that means that rook is toast. It's just a matter of time before Alex emerges victorious from this game, a very well played game. He has total control over the position. He's got those strong pawns. I she gotta seems say, really shaken by that move. He's gonna take Elena down. She realizes that it's all over and now there's nothing to do. Alex ends up making a queen as we predicted earlier. And now he's just chasing her king all the way across the board. And we have a battery very similar to the ones that we saw Alex run in earlier in the game. He just gets it on the other side of the board. Checkmate. It's a checkmate, and she is through. In this checkmate, Alex's queen is protecting all the squares that Elena's king would like to run to. The king can't capture the queen because the queen is protected by the bishop in the center of the board. Alex, our power chess master, one of our favorites, is able to take out Elena in this game, and he moves on to the next round. Alex right now is our front runner. He masters the clock, he's got the psychology down, and he's got the move. A very tough game against Alex Burnett, the highest rated player in the tournament. What happened there? I think I just went overconfident in my position. I opened myself up too much. The way I played it, it didn't leave any room for counterplay or anything. I was better. So you're the youngest girl in the country who holds the national master title. Yeah. So what's next for you? I'm hoping to just practice and practice and practice like I do every day and hopefully with time reach the Grandmaster level. Coming up we have Elliot versus Alyssa. Alyssa is not only one of the top female players in America, she's also a philosophy student and a dancer. And Elliot is a great player in his own right and he actually came all the way from Italy because he thought that the Extreme Chess Championship was his title. How do you feel about playing against Alyssa? She was one of the people I wasn't really Looking forward to playing, especially first. She and I are really good friends. We've kind of grown up together. Obviously, that's not my ideal first pairing. He's one of the favorites, and he's also really strong. She's obviously one of the top female players in the United States. She's always mm -hmm. playing in the US Women's Championship. And just the fact that we're so familiar with each other, how we each play, probably during this game, I'll have to do something a little different. With the white pieces, we have Elliot Lou. With the black pieces, we have Alyssa Melikina. Start your clocks. Elliot plays the first move, d4. We've seen a lot of people in this tournament push their king's pawn forward. Now he's playing the queen's pawn, which tends to lead to slightly slower games. We get into an opening known as the King's Indian. This game is actually so far starting out more rapidly than our other games. The King's Indian is a very aggressive opening where you develop your bishop on the side of the board. It often results in very close positions where few pawns are traded. And it was also a favorite of the American world champion Bobby Fischer. He loved the Kings in the end. I'm a philosophy major and I'm going to law school. I am a junior in college. I am taking a quarter to study abroad in Italy, and right now I'm living in Florence. When did you fly in from Italy for this tournament? What is today? Sunday. So I got in late Friday night. Still a little jet lag? Yeah, definitely. Around the time I started playing chess, I also started taking dance classes, ballet, and so I've been continuing with that over the years. I've picked up like jazz, lyrical, modern, ballroom, other types of dance. It looks like Elliot has a lot more space now, but Elisa's pieces are going to be a little bit more active. I particularly like Alyssa's bishop right next to her king. It's the longest diagonal on the chessboard that her bishop has control over. Yeah, that bishop's doing double duty. It's not only her best attacker, but it's also going to be a very important defender for her king. And I like the way that both players are playing. They each have a clear plan. Ellie is trying to expand on the king's side, and it looks like Alyssa is going to be trying to push her queen side pawns to gain more space there. 
Alyssa showing that she is definitely out for blood in this game. She looks sweet and nice. She's also a ballerina, but when it comes to the board, she's a bloodthirsty ballerina. We're talking oh. Black Swan here. Uh, hopefully they uh, don't end the game as it ended in Black Swan. Hey, you're giving away the ending. Oh, well. But here she is. She's giving away that pawn on B5. Oh, at least it does look a lot like Natalie Portman. Some kind of mix between Mila Kunis and Natalie Portman. I think that's a compliment. She gives up the pawn, but her idea is that she's moving her rook to that open file, and she's going to gain the pawn back, and she's going to gain activity for her pieces. And we see that her bishop over there that we talked about earlier is now attacking the rook on the long diagonal. So Elliot, of course, is moving it and adding extra protection to his well-placed knight on c4. I definitely like the black position here. I don't really see where Elliot's going to be able to advance. Alyssa plays a really good move in this position. She plays knight over to interfere with the attack on the d-pawn. So now white can't capture it because it's protected by the queen. And he has a choice to make here because she's threatening to take on c4 and trade off a bunch of pieces. Very fiery part of the game. Wait a second, she's not just threatening to take on c4. Excuse me, she wants to do more than just trade off knights. She wants to win something here. And now she plays this move, rook over to attack the queen, but it's also attacking the pawn. Wow, this is a really good move by Alyssa. Elliot was hoping that in this position, Alyssa wouldn't be able to take the knight because he could take the rook on a4. She would snap off that bishop on e3 and give herself an interesting exchange where she keeps that strong bishop's diagonal and gets that knight deep into Elliot's position. He decides to just try to calm things down and just take that knight back. He doesn't want it to get active on e3 and also to take his bishop. But the problem here is it looks like Alyssa's just snapped off a pawn. I like black right now. It looks like Elliot is in a lot of trouble. Alyssa has a pawn on the outside of the board that looks like it's going to be pushing all the way down the board, possibly able to turn into a queen. And remember that the better you are, the more a pawn advantage can decide the whole game. You wouldn't want to give Lance Armstrong an extra tire. Oh, he is just getting outplayed in this position. Not only is Alyssa up a pawn, but she's also got crazy activity here. Look at her queen go. Now it's going to g4. That's a great square because it's threatening a checkmate. We keep seeing that checkmate with the queen right against the king's face. Now is it possible that maybe Elliot would take the rook, but then, of course, Alyssa is going to be able to capture Elliot's rook. Yes, but then at least he won't get checkmated. So I think that would probably be something he might consider. And he does do it. He goes for that trade. But now Alyssa gets a check and the white king is getting further exposed here. That king is not happy right now. Alyssa is just dominating this game. She's dancing all over the board and it looks like Elliot might have to catch an early flight back to Italy, losing in just round one of the Extreme Chess Championship. She got herself into a great position. I think she should be able to do it because this position is pretty simple. There's not a lot of hidden tactics. Now there's one really easy one here that Alyssa saw. She doesn't want to take that pawn off right away because then white will capture the other pawn and have a nice little skewer between the queen and the rock. When that queen moves out of the way, she's going to win the exchange. That's why she's one of the top women players in the country. She's not going to fall for something like that. She puts her rook to the open file, which makes that king even further unhappy. She's still got an extra pawn, and she's got the king to play against. But the thing here is that Elliot's hammering on her c-pawn. He wants to take it so that the position will be equal. She's got to figure out a way to defend that pawn, which is tough because it's getting defended once and it's being attacked by all of the pieces in Elliot's army. The queen's attacking it, the bishop's attacking it, and the rook's attacking it. That's what you do when your opponent has a weakness. You have to build up every single piece you can to be able to get rid of it. He must win that pawn or he's going to go down. It's very clear that his idea was getting rid of the pawn that was the most danger to him. And now Alyssa needs to find the absolute best move in this position. Bishop d4 would be crushing, defending c5 and attacking f4. Oh no, she moves her rook instead. Elliot just captures the pawn. It looks as though she's given away her only advantage in the game. Elliot is known for his defensive skills and even though it seems like she has a little bit of the initiative, he's just protecting everything. He was able to beat back the attack, and now it looks like both players are headed towards a draw. Elliot keeps moving his queen away, Alyssa keeps attacking it, and they've done it three times in a row in chess that is known as 
three move repetition. Draw. That means they split this game and they're gonna have to go to tie break. Elliot definitely dodged the bullet there. However, the tie break situation is gonna be very tricky with the time because they're gonna start off with the exact amount of time they left off the last game with, which means four minutes for Alyssa and just 52 seconds for Elliot. That is gonna be a tough battle for the Stanford student. It's like starting the game up a touchdown. A draw happens when there's no way that either side can win. There are a few different ways that a game can end in a draw. When neither side has sufficient material to mate, for example, king versus king and bishop, no matter how hard white tries, he cannot set up a checkmate against the enemy king with a lone bishop. So the players will eventually agree to a draw. Stalemate is when a player can't move any of his pieces, but is not in check. For instance, in this position, the king can't move because the queen guards all of the squares. It's a stalemate. Three move repetition. If a position is repeated three times, then a player can claim a draw. This type of draw is often a perpetual check or a never ending series of checks. In the extreme chess championship, someone has to be eliminated in each match. There can only be one winner. So if the game is a draw, the competitors play again with the same amount of time on their clocks as before. In the Extreme Chess Championships, when the players draw, they switch colors and they play again until somebody wins. They also keep the same amount of time that they had in the last game. So Elliot ended the last game with 52 seconds, so he's going to start this game with 52 seconds. Alyssa is going to start with 4 minutes and 15 seconds. Start your clocks. And now these two are close friends, Alyssa and Elliot, but it looks like somebody might be getting defriended and unfollowed after this game. Starts off with a much different opening than Elliot usually plays. The queen has come up very, very early. He's trying to surprise Alyssa. That is worth a lot in such a rapid game. She's totally shocked. If you can take your opponent by surprise, that can gain you some valuable seconds and shake their confidence. Because the queen is your most powerful piece, when you put her out that early, she keeps getting kicked around. And a lot of times your opponent gets to develop all of her pieces while kicking you around. That is why it's not such a popular opening, but that's also why it's a great surprise. I like the way that both players are playing. They're playing quickly, which is obviously very important in this time control. <laughs> Elliot has no other choice. Elliot's very solid, and he's also got a lot of easy moves to make, which is good when he has so little time. He knows what he wants to do. He wants to move his rooks to the open files. Both players are trying to put pressure on each other. Alyssa offering a trade of queens. Elliot declining the trade of queens. He wants to keep the ladies on the board. He's a real ladies man. And what do we have here? We have an imbalance that we've seen before in the Extreme Chess Championship. Alyssa's gonna take the two rooks for the queen. Let's see if it works out just the same as it did for Justice. Justice had the two rooks and he managed to make a beautiful checkmate against Kevin. But here, Elliot's queen is very well placed and his king is pretty well protected. I like White's position. I think she can do it the same way. Well, you know what's really nice? She just played this move rookie seven and now she's attacking the F7 square with both her rook and her bishop. But she doesn't back down. She's dancing right into the king's position. Elliot's just ignoring it. He's just saying, take my pawn. Well, I guess he didn't have much of a choice. Alyssa just played her knight to the center of the board trying to distract Elliot from defending h7 and he just ignores it and takes off one of her pawns. They're going super fast now. I have no idea who's going to win this game. It looks like Elliot's down to his last 10 seconds and now they've almost caught up in time. She's used a lot of time to get into the situation. Elliot's gambit worked, keeping the queens on the board to make her start thinking. We're in rapid fire chess now. The pieces are flying everywhere. I can't keep up, Jen. What's going on? I can't keep up either. Both kings are dancing. This dance might be better suited for the faster player. Oh no, and now the queen has completely invaded. Cool as a cucumber, Elliot's going in for the kill. It looks like this time the queen might win out. And it's queen check. Checkmate. And mate with the Ooh. knight protecting it on F4. Oh, Alyssa feels crushed here. In this checkmate, Elliot's queen is attacking Alyssa's king. Alyssa can't capture the queen because that well-posted knight on F4 is protecting it. Very well played by Elliot. He had less time, but he kept a cool head and he managed to invade with his queen and send Alyssa packing. Sadly, for those who want the women to win, we've lost both of our female competitors, Alyssa and Elena, have both been eliminated. In other words, he's saying, Ciao, Bella. 
Well, that was quite a match against your friend, Thank Alyssa. You. <laughs> and the first game, you seem to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I don't really know what happened. I think I may, I slipped up once in the middle game. I thought I had a good position and then I missed a little tactic that she had. And she, you know, is a really good player, so she immediately took advantage of that. And then I found myself in a bit of trouble. I thought that I got a better position and then he, he just kept, I don't know, exchanging pieces, like he wanted a draw, but I kept pushing, you know, maybe I shouldn't have pushed so hard. I think I was a bit overconfident at that point that I thought that would be a big advantage for me. And then when you finally made the draw, did you feel relief that you had a draw from this bad position or dread that you now had to play with just a minute? I mean, pro for black? probably both. Um, I realized I would start with like 50 seconds from the beginning with black and she'd have like a five minute time advantage, which is huge, you know? I thought, you know, in the second game, I'd be up like three minutes and I'd have white and um, I was expecting him to play the Sicilian like he usually does with the Scandinavian, just completely shocked me. I tried to play something very simple and like easy to play so I can make my, my first moves really fast to try and build up some time. I guess it worked out in the end. So I mean that's the nature of this you know cutthroat type of tournament with these you know special rules and regulations. Very little time, it's fast paced, exciting, and anything can happen. That was a great first round, but unfortunately our time is up. That means you're gonna have to come back again to the next round of the Extreme Chess Championship. Jen, what are we gonna be looking forward to? Well, Casa's gonna be playing against Justice, and we're gonna see Alex against Elliot. It's gonna be really exciting as we go to the semifinals and finals and get closer and closer to seeing who's gonna be the first Extreme Chess Champion.